Kelly, you are an attendant at the Portland State Hospital located in Portland, Maine. Are you not? Yes, I am. On June 3, 1993, was a patient by the name of Ray Dalton transferred to your facility from the Bangor State Care Facility? Yes, that is correct. Did documentation accompany Mr. Dalton suggesting that he might be suicidal or possibly suicidal? Yes, there was some paperwork that came in with Mr. Dalton to that effect. We had also been pre-warned as to his condition. What is the normal procedure in most institutions of this nature to safeguard a person of this nature from himself? We check the person for any type of weapon, sharp objects, belts, scarves, etc. that can be used in a manner to inflict harm to themselves. Are they thoroughly examined? Yes, we conduct a no close search, sometimes called a skin search. Was this examination performed on Mr. Dalton? Yes, it was. Then what happened? Because of the sporadic behavior at the time of the arrival of Mr. Dalton at the Portland facility, the floor supervisor decided to put him into four-point restraints. Is that the common medical way of safeguarding an individual from himself? Sometimes it is. Was there a supervising doctor on duty at that time? Yes, there was. All right, let's try this one again. <clears throat> Mr. Kelly, you are an attendant at the Portland State Hospital located in Portland, Maine. Are you not? Yes, I am. On June 3, 1993, was a patient by the name of Ray Dalton transferred to your facility from the Bangor State Care Facility? Yes, that is correct. Did documentation accompany Mr. Dalton suggesting that he might be suicidal or possibly suicidal? Yes, there was some paperwork that came in with Mr. Dalton to that effect. We had also been 
pre-warned as to his condition. What is the normal procedure in most institutions of this nature to safeguard a person of this nature from himself. We check the person for any type of weapon, sharp objects, belts, scarves, etc that can be used in a manner to inflict harm to themselves. Are they thoroughly examined? Yes. We conduct a no-close search, sometimes called a skin search. Was this examination performed on Mr. Dalton. Yes, it was. Then what happened? Because of the sporadic behavior at the time of the arrival of Mr. Dalton at the Portland facility, the floor supervisor decided to put him into four-point restraints. Is that the common medical way of safeguarding an individual from himself? Sometimes it is. Was there a supervising doctor on duty at that time? Yes, there was. Let's try another one. Did he examine Mr. Dalton at the time he entered the facility? No. He was attending to other patients and wasn't expected to see Mr. Dalton until the following morning. So, in other words, to protect Mr. Dalton from himself, he was placed in four-point restraints? Yes, he was. Mr. Kelly, how long have you worked at the Portland State Hospital? Five years and about three months. In your five years at the facility, what other methods have you seen administered to calm an individual down to eliminate the risk of suicide normally? We use one of two methods. The most common method is to place a person in isolation. We take everything away that they might use to inflict harm. Sometimes we put them into padded cells. Is medication ever administered to calm down individuals? Very infrequently. How infrequently? One out of five patients? One out of 100 
patients, one out of 1,000 patients? I don't know. We would have to check the hospital records. Are all persons whose behavior you would characterize as sporadic put into four point restraints? Not always. Did he examine Mr. Dalton at that time he entered the facility? No. In other words, to protect him. Mr. Kelly, how long have you worked at the Portland State Hospital? Five years and about three months. In your five years at the facility, what other methods have you seen administered to calm an individual down to eliminate the risk of Suicide. Normally, we use one of two methods. The most common method is to place a person in isolation. We take everything away that they might use to inflict harm. Sometimes we put them into padded cells. Is medication ever administered to calm down individuals? Very infrequently. How infrequently? One out of five patients? One out of 100 patients? One out of 1,000 patients? I don't know. We would have to check the hospital records. Are all persons whose behavior you would characterize as sporadic put into four point restraints? Not always. All right, let's try this one. Uh, okay. Who makes the determination to put a person in four point restraints? Normally, the doctor. Who made the determination to put Mr. Dalton in restraints. The floor supervisor, Mrs. Jackson. Where was Mr. Dalton taken to after he was put in four point restraints? to cell 11A. Was Mr. Dalton examined by a physician that day, June 3, 1993? No, he wasn't. What time did Mr. Dalton enter the Portland State Hospital? I believe at about 1.25 p.m. So, Mr. Dalton was put in four-point restraints on June 3, 1993, placed in cell 11A 
and left there for over 18 hours. Is that correct? What do you mean by left there? He was left there unattended for 18 hours. No, that is not true. He was checked every hour on the hour by a floor attendant. Eighty-two voice. Eighty-two voice. Ready? Mr. Lowe, will you speak up so that this last gentleman can hear every word that you say? What is your business? An auditor. And with whom are you connected? The Ellis Corporation. How long have you been connected with them? Five years. Now, on March 2, where did you reside? Yonkers. And how long had you resided there? Two years. Where do you reside now? Same place. And is the plaintiff in the action that has been brought here your wife? Yes. Now, on the morning of March 2nd, will you tell these gentlemen exactly what you did in connection with riding in a taxi cab and what happened while you were so riding in it? We arrived at the West Side subway station around 3 o'clock in the morning. We got a taxi cab there and told him to drive us home. The first thing I knew, the car started to bump. My wife said no. Not what your wife said. You can't say that. What was done? I was told to tell the driver to stop this car driving so fast. Not what you were told. What did you do? I was looking for the cigarette I dropped and trying to get the driver's attention to stop this car. Yes, when all of a sudden we went down in a crash right under the trestle there. Where was that with respect to the westerly end of that trestle. I should say just on the incline, about 30 feet from the trestle, where we finally stopped. Now, what if anything did you see happen to your wife while you were under the trestle? I didn't see anything. It happened so quickly that I didn't know she was hurt until she said she was. Now, you say that this crash took place underneath the trestle? Underneath the trestle, yes. 
How did it compare with the other bumps that you have spoken of before you reached the position underneath the trestle? Well, there wasn't any comparison at all. This was a crash. The rest was a little jolting as if you were going over a rough road. Well now, how far a distance was it from the station to the trestle in question? I would say about 300 yards. I show you this photograph and ask you whether it is a fair representation of the location with respect to the trestle, nothing else. Yes, this is the trestle. Seventy. Ready? Where did you say the subway is? What side? The subway is on the west. Now, after you say that you had this crash, and turned into this thing as you described it and the taxi cab stopped. What, if anything, did you do with your wife that night? I don't understand that. Well, what next happened after this crash. I told him to drive on carefully. We got home and my wife took the number of the car. I didn't realize she was hurt. What did you observe about her physical condition after the accident. She stayed in bed for two weeks and just rested. Then what, if anything, did she do that you know of? I think I rubbed her back. I rubbed it. That is about all I did and put heat to it. Then where did she go, if anywhere, subsequent to that? Whom did she consult to your knowledge? A physician. Did your wife go to the hospital? Yes. How long did she remain at that hospital? Two weeks. And then she was under anybody's care? Under a doctor's personal care. Now, will you state whether or not you hired any nurses for her during that time? There was a nurse during all the time she was there. How long did she remain there? Two weeks, you say? Approximately two weeks. Then what if anything happened to her 
What did she do subsequent to treatment at the hospital for two weeks? She came home. What did you observe her condition to be after she came home with respect to what she did? Did she do her housework as she had done it before? She wasn't able to do anything, not even light dusting. She couldn't bend over. And how long did that continue? To your knowledge, it has continued right up to the present. If she dusts, she is all in. Now, do you know whether or not subsequent to that treatment, your wife had been under the treatment of any other Physicians? Yes, Dr. Lee. Okay, 62 boys. Okay, ready? 62 boys. Now, on this day that you say you fell, about what time was this that you say you fell? I should say around five minutes after eight. And you were trying to catch an 806 train? The 809. Now, you had been crossing this same path ever since the pathway had been opened Yes, sir. After the construction of the work, 